Welcome to Two Guys in a Ride. Today we're going to review the 2021 Mazda CX-30 2.5 Turbo Premium Plus with all-wheel drive. I'll tell you about the horsepower, cargo, dimensions, and safety. And I'll tell you about the interior, the controls, and all the technology. But before we get started, take a moment, click that subscribe button down below, and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss one of our videos. That's right. So, what do you say, Nate? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. Today, we're working with our friends at Maury's Mazda in Minnetonka, Minnesota. This is the 2021 Mazda CX-30 2.5 Turbo Premium Plus all-wheel drive. Mazda says the Kodo design language captures a sense of movement even at a standstill. The sweeping S-curve along the doors captures the interplay of light and shadow constantly shifting and reflecting the world around you, thus inspiring you to seize the moment. So, We've parked it in the shade with a little dappled light coming in to show you what that looks like. Now there are seven trim levels available. The 2.5 Plus starts at 22,050. Then there's the Select at 24,050. Then there's the Preferred that starts at 26,450. The Premium starts at 28,700. The 2.5 Turbo starts at 30,050. The 2.4, excuse me, 2.5 Turbo Premium starts at 32,450, and the 2.5 Turbo Premium Plus starts at 34,050. This specific CX-30 is presented here in snowflake white pearl mica, and it has a black leather-trimmed interior and an MSRP of $35,620. It's powered by Mazda's Skyactive engine, which is an aluminum alloy, 2.5 liter, four cylinder, intercooled turbocharged engine with four valves per cylinder, and it has variable valve timing and advanced direct injection. Now it does produce 250 horsepower and 329 pound feet of torque on 93 octane fuel, and it produces 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque using 87 octane fuel. It is driven by a select active drive six-speed electronically controlled sport automatic transmission with iActive all-wheel drive with off-road traction assist and it does have a final drive ratio of 3.841. Now, in my reviews, I always give you the horsepower and torque ratings, but what exactly is horsepower and torque? Well, horsepower is a unit of measurement used to denote the power or rate at which work is done by an engine or a motor. Your car's horsepower denotes how quickly that work can be done with more power allowing for quicker work. Now, torque is force multiplied by distance. In the case of cars, the rotational equivalent of linear force. Well, essentially, it's the amount of force applied to an object with a twisting motion, such as a motor applying force to a crankshaft, which in turn then does rotate your tires, whether it be rear wheel or front wheel drive or all wheel drive. So what's the difference between horsepower and torque? Well, they are very much the same, uh, very much this, uh, two sides of the same coin as one does go with the other. Torque being the force and horsepower being the rate at which that force is done. The difference is torque is doing the work while horsepower is how fast that work is being done. So probably a little bit more than you wanted to know, but there you go, now you do know. All right. Let's take a look out front and I'll step over to the other side so you can see it a little bit better. These are auto on off signature LED headlights and they do have the directionally adaptive front lighting system and LED daytime running lights. And I really do like the design. I like how they are really set back in there as well. This is a gloss black grill with a chrome surround and there is the chrome lower headlight trim as well. It does have parking assist forward facing camera 
is a body colored front bumper with a matte black lower splitter and air intake and there are parking sensors in the bumper as well. Now, one of my favorite design cues here is on the front end is where the turn signals are located and they're mounted at the intersection of the body colored front bumper and that black lower trim or lower splitter, if you will. I like how Mazda placed the lights right in that little thin gap between the two areas. It's a really nice look. I think it's very nice and clean. Speaking of that, up top there is a nice clean lined sloping hood and above that are rain sensing variable intermittent windshield wipers. Let's take a look around the side. Okay, along the side, I do like the proportions of the CX-30 and they are due to this long low hood and a laid back windshield. And of course you have that traditional rounded off SUV look out back. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about the side profile of this vehicle. I think it's really sporty and it looks like it is moving indeed. Now, these are 18 inch alloy, aluminum alloy wheels and they're wrapped in 215-55R 18 all season tires. Up front, it is an independent McPherson strut suspension with anti-roll bar and out back is a torsion beam rear axle with coil springs and gas pressurized shocks. It does have four wheel, four channel ABS with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist and up front, 11.6 inch vented front disc and out back 11.9 inch solid rear brake disc. I actually do really do like the matte black wheel well and lower side door trim and down below is actually a little rocker panel lip and it does have the black powered mirrors with the integrated signals and it has memory positioning and tilt in reverse function and this one does have the 360 camera. There are also body color door handles with the touch uh, sensor lock and unlock. And this one does have the chrome belt line and of course the black upper window trim. Up top, there are integrated roof rails. I like those, they're that kind of brushed silver. And there is a power sliding glass moonroof with one touch open feature and it does have an interior sun shade. Let's take a look around the back. Okay, around back, it does have the nice gloss black um, mounted roof spoiler, roof mounted spoiler with integrated high mount third brake light. It has a power lift gate, and this is a heated fixed rear window with a fixed integral wiper. Uh, however, it is not a hands free lift gate, and I do wish they would have taken this wiper and tucked it up under here somehow in that design. It would have made this whole rear end much, much cleaner design. Uh, I think it would have looked a lot better. Now, these are full LED signature combination tail lights, and I do like the shape and detail of them. It really does borrow heavily from the design cues of the Miata. Now, there are also parking sensors in the bumper as well, and there is a rear view camera, and it has a matte black rear bumper with reflectors down below. And these are a quasi dual stainless steel exhaust with chrome tailpipe finishers. I say quasi because it is a single exhaust, but it does dual out back here at that rear uh, muffler. Now I do like how they've really squared off this cargo opening. I think it allows you better access to the cargo area. And speaking of the cargo area, let's take a look inside. The second row seats are split folding 60-40 and I like how high that opens and you can adjust it. Now under the cargo floor there is a compact spare tire and tool kit and in the middle of the spare tire is the stereo systems, which this is a Bose system, is the subwoofer for that system. Now there isn't a rear cargo release handle to fold the rear seats flat, but you can simply just reach forward to the back of the seats press down the handle and fold the seats forward. It's not a long reach at all. There are some that do really have a long reach. There is a cargo light on the driver's side as well. Now, maximum cargo behind the front row with all the second row seats folded is 45.2 cubic feet. Maximum cargo, as you see here with the second row seats in place is 20.2 cubic feet. Cargo floor length from the front row to the rear seal, as we have it adjusted, is 63 inches. Cargo floor length to second row to the rear seal is 32 inches. 
Cargo width at the belt line is 35 inches. Internally, cargo width at the wheel houses is 40 inches. Cargo opening height, floor to ceiling is 29 and a half inches, and the lift over ground into the vehicle is 30 inches. So, if you, do you think this is the right SUV for you and your active lifestyle? Let me know. Leave a comment in the section down below. So let's talk about some of the safety systems that are available on this Mazda CX-30. Well, you have radar cruise control with stop and go. It does have blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. You do also get lane departure warning system. It has lane keeping assist. It has a driver attention alert. Now I'll tell you, those things really do wake you up if you're nodding off. It does have blind spot monitoring. It has adaptive front lighting system that as you turn, the lights turn with you. 360 view monitor, has front and rear parking sensors and so very much more. Next up, let's talk about the dimensions. Okay, I've received comments that I rattle off these dimensions a little too fast, so I will slow down but also make sure to watch the scroll that goes across the bottom or the dimensions do come in from the side and dis they come into the side and disappear. And I also list this information uh, there in my notes below the video as well. So front track, 61.6 inches, rear track, 61.6 inches. Maximum width, 70.7 inches. Overall length, 173 inches. Overall height, 62.2 inches. It rides on a wheelbase of 104.4 inches. It has a minimum ground clearance of eight inches. Its curb weight, 3,505 pounds. It has a maximum payload, how much weight you can carry, of 977 pounds. And when properly equipped, it can tow up to 2,000 pounds. It does have a 37.3 foot turning circle and a fuel capacity of 12.7 gallons. What about safety on the Mazda CX-30? Well, actually IIHS has given it an overall top safety pick plus rating, and NHTSA has given it an overall five-star rating as well. What about performance? Well, seven, uh, excuse me, zero to 60 in 7.6 seconds, standing quarter mile 15.9 seconds at 89 miles an hour, and it does have a top speed of 126 miles per hour. 70 to zero braking, 174 feet. Well, what about its appearance? Well, you know, they do say it's those flowing Kodo design lines, and it has that sports car type long hood and a sloping windshield. Makes it look really sporty. Basic warranty, three years, 36,000 miles. Powertrain warranty, five years, 36,000 miles and there is roadside assistance for three years or 36,000 miles. Now, it's an economy car, so what's the fuel economy? It's 22 city, 30 highway, and it has 25 combined. So not bad for an all-wheel drive small car. Now let's take a look inside, but before we do, make sure to check out my notes, as I mentioned a minute ago, in the description down below, and please take a moment to give us a like, leave a comment, and click on that subscribe button down below. Okay, Nate, what do you say? Take it away. And stepping on the inside, you're going to notice all this nice uh, soft touch material even down in here. Door handle, the only hard part's like really right down here. Now, up here, you have got your window lockout. You got auto up and down all four windows. You got your left, right mirror control selectors, and then the uh, arrow controls for moving them. And then up here, you do have your unlock and lock buttons, as well as your door handle and a physical uh, lock button. Down below, you've got quite a bit of storage down in here. You've got a bottle holder right here, and one of your 12 Bose uh, speakers. Now, this driver's seat is a 10-way power, including two-position lumbar, and the passenger seat is a all manual control uh, seat. Coming down here, you have your foot pedals, you got a nice big foot rest. Coming up here, you got your uh, hood release, and then coming up in here, you've got a little coin storage area, or you can store pretty much anything in there. And then coming up here, You've got your uh, tailgate open. You got your uh, two-person memory setting for the driver's seat. 
And then coming up here, you've got your uh, iActive safety system activation here. You've got your camera. This does have the 360 camera, so pushing this will give you the, uh, the front camera as well when you're in drive. Parking sensors on or off and off-road assist right here. Now the steering is a tilt and telescope and that lever is right here. It's manual, but it is tilt and telescope. You'll notice behind the steering wheel here, you do have paddle shifters right there on both sides. Now let's step in and start it up. All right, it is a push start that's right here. Like the little CX-30 graphic that comes up. Okay, so on the dashboard, you have got your RPM gauge, which is analog. You On the far right, you've got your engine temperature and your fuel gauge and some uh, warning lights. And then in the center, the speedometer and then your miles per gallon and um, your miles till empty there and your temperature are all digital. Now, what's inside the speedometer gauge is, is what can change and we'll have another video on that and you can click on the link above to view that and uh, all the stuff that's available in the infotainment screen. Coming back uh, just a little bit, you do have a trip meter right here which will change between trip A, trip B, and the odometer. Okay, on the far right, you've got your brightness and dimness for your dashboard. And then coming back from that, uh, up on the steering wheel here, you've got your paddle shifters, you've got your windshield wiper controls, you've got your uh, turn signals and your lights. This does have a uh, fully auto light, so high beam and low beam as well as auto on off. And then coming back to the steering wheel, on the far left, you have your media controls right here. Uh, you have a mute button that's included right here and a source button that's here. Otherwise, you can just push them up or down to use the top switches. Those aren't separate buttons. Um, down here, you've got your voice command. Also, you use this to answer a phone call. Uh, you can use this to hang up a phone call. And then this is the info button that changes the display uh, in the uh, digital speedometer area. Over on the right, you have all of your cruise control buttons here. So you have cruise on and off. You have your, uh, what we would normally call lane keeping assist right here. And then you've got your gap setter. You've got, uh, this is increase, this is decrease. And then you have your set plus or minus. And then a push is cancel and a push here is resume. All right, coming over to the infotainment screen. This is an 8.8 .8 inch screen. And uh, you've got, of course, navigation. You have got Bluetooth. You've got uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and AM and FM and Sirius XM radio. Uh, you do have a 12-speaker Bose audio system as well. Now, coming down just below that, you know, you know you've got an uh, air vent right here, and there's one on the other side of the console for the driver. And then you've got a whole series of vents that... Uh, that run across the, the main section of the dashboard. Down here, you've got a nice LCD display for your temperature controls. Uh, you got a power on, off. Um, this button and this button have nothing written on them, but the display is right up here. This changes from fresh air to recirculatory, and this changes that where the air blows. You got your AC on or off, and then plus or minus for the fan. It is a dual zone auto climate control, and you can turn it to auto just by pushing right here. And then you can increase or decrease the temperatures uh, if you want separately or you can press the sync button and they change together. Right down below that you do have your heated steering wheel button, your heated seat for the driver, front defroster, hazards, rear defroster, and heated seat for the passenger and it's three stage on both sides. Now down just below that You've got a USB input here, and this is what you would use for your Apple CarPlay Android Auto or a USB if you're using that for music. And then down below there, you do have a little storage area. It's not a wireless charger, but you can store your phone in there. And you do have two cup holders right here. Coming back from that, you have your gear selector. Okay, I do like having the shifter like this, and the release for it is just right in the front. So you pull that, if you, you can put it in drive, or you can knock it over to the left, and then you can physically shift or use the paddle shifters. Coming down from that, you do have uh, uh, a one mode in here. You've got, well, you've got it, either it's not in sport or it's in sport. Okay, so up is sport, down is off. You got your parking brake right here. You have your auto hold on or off. And that again is when you come to a, if it's on, when you come to a stop and take your a complete stop and you take your foot off the brake, the car will remain stopped until you accelerate. 
Okay, if that's off, then you take your foot off the brake and the car rolls. All right, coming over to this side, you've got power, you've got mute. Mute is just a quick touch, and then power is a longer push. And then, of course, you have got the track buttons to change stations and volume. Okay, now track change is a push of the lever, and volume is a rotation. Down here, you've got favorites, and you can store a couple different things in there. And uh, again, if you want to see how that works, you can watch our video on the driver's information screen and the infotainment center. Now, in the center, you have this uh, command wheel, and this is what controls your infotainment screen. This is not a touch screen. Uh, so over here, you've got a couple shortcuts. You've got navigation, back, home, and then media. All right. Now, the center console is a very interesting thing. So if you pull the lever, you can push the cover back, and then you have access to some things like you could uh, set something small. You could set a phone in there, although I'd be a little worried about it flopping out during a corner, uh, but but does have a little bit of a ledge there. Okay? To open it, you just press the lever and open it up, and there you go. You got a little felt piece at the bottom, and then you do have um, you do have a divider that just simply goes into these little grooves, and you can divide it a couple different ways. In addition to that, you can have another USB-A and a 12 volt outlet right there. Okay, now the thing to note is, if I close this cover all the way, and then I pull the lever to open it, it doesn't open. So it has to be slid all the way back, and then the, butt, the, the lever has to be squeezed again before you can open it. Moving over to the glove compartment here, you do have a dampened opening, which is nice. You've got an extra shelf up here, which stores all your manuals, and then you still have storage underneath that. Okay, coming up, you do have all soft touch materials across the top of the dashboard in this nice sort of a chocolate brown, which is on the doors. This is all soft touch right here. Doesn't get a hard surface till you're down here. Coming up, you have an auto dimming rear view mirror with your three home link buttons underneath it for your garage doors. And then up here, of course, you have your, uh, uh, your lights, your reading lights right here. You can turn this uh, on or off to set whether they, those lights come on when the doors are open. And then this one turns on all the lights in the car. This is your power sunroof slide and tilt. And then the actual cover for it is a physical uh, cover. Now, this is a sunglass storage right here. And then the visors on both sides have a light that's in the ceiling, and when you open it, the light comes on. Okay? They are not telescoping. Okay? And they do have, I should mention, an extra slider built into them, which is really nice. And both sides are exactly the same. All right, let's hop in the second row and take a look. Okay, in the second row here, on the door, you got this nice, uh, same nice uh, sort of a chocolate brown uh, and black combination. You've got your auto up and down window switch. You've got one of your 12 Bose speakers in here. And of course, a physical uh, lock and on lock button. You do have an area for bottle storage uh, right in the door. All right, let's step in. So, uh, I left the seat adjusted where it was when I was driving. You can see I've got like three inches of knee space right here. Uh, which is really good. Now, I don't have a, a map pocket on the driver's side, but I do have one on the passenger side right here. In the center console, we've got two air vents and then nothing else. There are no USBs or 12-volt uh, outlets back here. You do have a center armrest right here with two cup holders, and it's nicely elevated again, which I like. So it matches the door, and it's comfortable. Now, the seats themselves are quite comfortable and uh, they don't adjust forward or backwards or recline. They are a 60-40 uh, split. Up above, you of course got your door, ha your uh, grab handle, coat hanger, and then the dome light is in the middle. Okay, next up, we're gonna take it for a ride. All right, my turn to drive. Well, you know, in terms of comfort, first of all, it's quiet. It's a nice quiet ride in here, well insulated. Um, you know, you, you can feel the, the little bumps in the road, uh, but it's got a short wheelbase. Um, I don't know how you're not going to feel those, uh, but it's pretty well dampened. The ease of getting in and out. Well, we'll overlay a little video here and you can see me getting in and out of the car. Uh, not hard at all. Uh, 
where is it? In terms of where everything is laid out, they know, well, Mazda makes a touch, the, the infotainment screen, not a touch screen. So all your stuff is right down here in the center. It is, and, and there's not so many buttons that it's hard to, um, to memorize where they are and to control. You also have your voice command. Now, on top of that, you've got a HUD display, which is a heads-up display, and that shows you, you know, all sorts of really neat things like your speed, um, it shows you your media, your navigate, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, um, all that kind of stuff, which is really nice. And so, um, and if you need to have any physical buttons, you know, you have them right on the steering wheel for the most part, and the climate stuff is right here. Uh, again, not easy, or not, again, it's not hard to, 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 to use them because the buttons are minimal, and so you only have to memorize a few things. That's it for my ride. Back to Rob. Okay, my turn, taking a drive in the CX-30. Now, I will say my daughter does have a uh, 2016 Mazda 3, and she really does like it, and this is you know, based off the newer version of the Mazda 3. So let's talk about the interior sound and quietness. Um, it's pretty well dampened right now. I'm going over some bumps and divots and stuff in the road, and I feel them. You hear them a little bit, but it doesn't, it isn't really intrusive into the cabin. And the road noise isn't either. So surprising for a small economy SUV. Um, you know, safety systems we talked about. It's got the surround view camera. It's got the uh, adaptive cruise control, which I love. Uh, you got navigation, you got parking sensors, uh, you've got so many things, ABS, brake force distribution, so many things that are just ubiquitous on today's modern vehicles, and this vehicle does have that as well. Uh, interior fit and finish, I like what they've done. I'm not a big fan of the two-tone, the brown and the black. I don't think it matches anything else on the vehicle, uh, but it does break up the monotony of the interior that would be all black then. I wish they would put a little bit more shiny stuff in here, like the uh, trim across the dashboard. You only have one little thin line. It's not bad, but it, it, I can see why they did the uh, two-tone brown and black because it would look a little, um, just a little boring if it didn't have that two-tone. So uh, overall, though, it's nicely finished. No rattles, no squeaks, a lot of soft touch materials. Uh, Armrests are very comfortable really nicely done and very very upscale and I know Mazda is trying to move upscale with their offerings and it's uh, I think it's very well done so what about acceleration well we're gonna try that here and it is a sport mode okay I didn't really have my foot into it too much because I am in an industrial park and people are working and I didn't want to <laughs> rattle their windows not that I think this actually would but it is peppy it is pretty uh, pretty quick it does have a quite a bit of torque and I covered that in my review depending on the octane you know you can get 300 and some pound feet of torque so that will move this vehicle right along pretty well well that's our review of the 2021 Mazda CX-30 2.5 turbo premium plus all-wheel drive and we do appreciate you spending some time with us. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And please take a moment, hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.